here. I want to kind of talk about Lysenko a little bit more because I dug into Lysenko's writings themselves. Um, but a lot of them just had to do with ideology. Um, I think the Soviet idea of evolutionary biology is largely being proven correct, right, by modern studies. Um, but what happened was the reason why Lysenko is such a contentious figure on the internet right now and in Western society is because he was in charge of like evolutionary biology and had a high a post of power in the Soviet Academy. And he was involved in trying to grow food in Ukraine where there were famines caused by weather conditions. But obviously the West and Ukrainian uh, nationalists created this idea that Stalin starved all those people on purpose. Um, the Holodomor idea. So Lysenko is the one who's often, you know, attacked or accused of um, creating these famines on purpose. So that's the reason it's so contentious to be like, well, Lysenko got some things right, you know, because he's been accused of killing millions and millions of people by the West. And we know the the Holodomor is nonsense. Um, we, we aren't uh, all aboard the Holodomor bus, which if you don't know or if you need more evidence that the Holodomor isn't a real thing, um, check out the Holodomor Awareness Tour, which was sponsored by right-wing think tanks and a um, bunch of uh, capitalist corporate funders. But they literally created a Holodomor bus to drive around and talk about the Ukrainian genocide by Stalin. But anyways, this is the reason Lysenko is such a contentious figure. Right, because he's accused of doing the Holodomor, doing Stalin's um, bidding. Um, and like, there's also when World War II happened, it made things crazy in the Soviet Union, right? They were hyper fixated on not being infiltrated, right? Not, um, not allowing traitors capitalist or Nazi traders into the Soviet government. And there were a lot of them, right? And this is where you get the purges uh, or where the purges get really bad. And there were Soviet scientists, including ones who were inspirational for Lysenko, um, who were gotten in the purges, right? Who probably shouldn't have been in hindsight. Um, and it's a product of the material conditions. It's, the pro it's a product of the crazy, crazy event that was World War II. Um, that forced the Soviet Union to do crazy things in order to survive, or maybe not crazy things, but forced them to do some drastic things in order to survive. There were some good scientists who were taken out at that time. Um, I mean, obviously, there's two sides to every story, right? Like, some people say Stalin killed this scientist because he just um, was evil and murderous and wanted to kill him. Um, some people like me would say Stalin, or, I mean, the, the purges got this scientist because they were worried about um, betrayal or, you know, um, infiltration by foreign, foreign capital. Um, and then there's those who say that, well, that scientist was actually planning a civil war, right? That scientist actually was collaborating with the Yahtzees um, to destroy the Soviet Union and therefore the purges were all a good thing. Right. So there's two sides to every story. But that's another reason people get attacked or people attack Lysenko, because um, there's an idea that a lot of these scientists, rather than, you know, being purged for being traitors, they were actually purged because they disagreed with Lysenkoism. Um, and if you read, you know, Lysenko's writing, which I did, he was, you know, heavily, heavily, heavily critical of um, a lot of the other uh, scientists in the Soviet Union at the time and calling them idealist and metaphysical and anti-Marxist, um, which, you know, could, with his position of power and his sort of celebrity status could contribute to them maybe getting purged. So that's where you get the, the crap with Lysenko, or, I mean, that's why it's, uh, not super popular to talk about Lysenko, but, you know, this idea, this Lamarckist or Lysenkoist idea that the the human genome, human genetics can actively adapt to the environment, right? To give you new traits that aren't completely random. And then you can pass those traits down to your children hereditarily. That idea is being proven by more and more modern science. 
this is actually a really good video from The Guardian in 2010 that talks about a handful of studies that seem to suggest what's now being called epigenetics or the field of epigenetics, um, which is that, you know, the environment and the actions of a person can actively alter their genome. And then you can pass on um, certain traits to your offspring that you gained, you know, in real life. So basically what you eat today could change your genome, how you interact um, with the world around you um, could affect your genome and affect your, your children and what traits they'll be predisposed to. And then your children's genome can actively develop. Um, and, you know, Lysenko and, and Lamarck, I, I haven't read Lamarck, um, who's, you know, I think that's the name of the guy who founded Lamarckism, but Lysenko was saying, you know, dialectical materialism says everything's unchanging, nothing's static, right? So why would the human genes be static? Why would they be unchanging within the person? They should also change. Um, and more and more evidence is coming out. More and more studies are coming out that prove that they kind of do. Um, now, I think Lysenko might have been kind of crudely applying dialectical materialism, right? Dialectical materialism means going to the concrete first and then forming our theory, right? Rather than trying to impose the laws of dialectical materialism on science, but there were a lot of scientists, you know, at Lysenko's time who were against even studying epigenetics, right? They were against even studying the idea um, or studying specifically how the environment changes and affects the genome and how that can be passed down. Um, and Lysenko wanted more resources and more research and more study to go into that area, um, which has been held back by a lot of, you know, preconceived assumptions in evolutionary biology till like today or until, you know, the 2000s. Um, so, yeah, his theories themselves, a lot of them are, like, being proven relatively correct. Um, but, um, you know, that's not the reason he's controversial. He's not controversial just because of strictly his theories, right? His theories were basically what's now called epigenetics. Um, and the heck else was I going to say? Oh, and, and Darwin, you know, you know how creationists, I don't know if people have ever heard this or people who believe in intelligent design that the, the earth was intelligently designed by a God, or it has to be, um, people for, who argue for this say that on his deathbed, Dar Darwin retracted everything, right? He said, nothing I said was true. It was all wrong. The theory of natural selection is wrong. That is untrue. Darwin never said that, right? But what Darwin did say all the way up until his death was that natural selection, my theory of natural selection is not the final answer, right? There could be other mechanisms at, at play with evolutionary biology and heredity that need to be studied, right? They could be far more complex than the basic framework I've laid out. And this is exactly what that is, right? So rather than the traditional Darwinian natural selection idea that genes mutate randomly, or, or mix with each other sort of randomly and are passed on, you know, to the offspring. And then those, um, those genes that are well suited to the environment are the ones that will repopulate and thrive, you know, versus those that aren't well suited to the environment will die out. Um, that's the traditional Darwinian idea. This idea that the genes themselves could adapt to the environment around them and change in real time is just, uh, a complication or an extension, an expansion on the original Darwinist idea. It's still right. You know, the idea of still of natural selection is still right. Those genes that are well suited to the environment um, are going to be the ones that thrive and are able to repopulate and grow faster than the others. But, you know, we know that those genes could be emerging, you know, because of the environment, because of um, uh, the way humans interact with the environment. They could be developing and changing in real time. Um, so it's, it's not against Darwin or, or Darwinian science or neo-Darwinianism. Um, it's just in a complication of it, an expansion on it. Um, so yeah, really cool. I'm really glad I took this dive into evolutionary biology. I was a little nervous about it, um, and genetics and heredity. Cause like, obviously it's something I've never studied. So I kind of made myself vulnerable to y'all. Um, I, you know, you've been watching me learn about this stuff and read about this stuff in real time, pretty much from the ground level up um, uh, with genetics and heredity and things like that. So I knew I was going to say things that were wrong, 
and I knew my opinions and conclusions on thir- certain things were going to, excuse me, going to change. But I want to show y'all how that is okay, right? It is okay to be wrong. It is okay to understand that you're not a master of a certain subject rather than pretend like I know everything. You know, I'm trying to learn as much as I can and, and change my conclusions and what I think as I go. Um, so that, that Guardian article that I pulled up even mentions Lamarckism. Right. It's like Lamarckism has has long been dismissed. Um, but now, you know, maybe we owe the Lamarckists an apology. Um, and yeah, which is why I think some people online now are hammering the Lysenko thing because they're like Lysenko has been dismissed as a pseudoscientist and a moron and a murderer and an evil Soviet um, scientist of the state. For years and years and years and years, that's not true. Um, and a lot of his ideas that he was positing in the 1930s are being confirmed by modern genetics and epigenetics. Um, so people feel a desire to exonerate him, right? It's not like the hill that I'm probably going to die on. You know, like like I said, there was crazy stuff going on in the Soviet Union at the time with the purges and whatnot. And I want to continue to learn about this stuff. Um but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting to learn about the theories, though, the theories that were um, gaining popularity in the Soviet Union in the 30s that are now kind of being confirmed. Um, yeah. Here's a, I had, that segment was going to be longer, but I didn't think it needed to be as long as I originally planned. I think I made all the main points I wanted to make right there. Um, I had, I was going to talk a little bit about the studies they did to to show these ideas, but um, y'all can look into them if you want. Look into that Guardian article I just pulled up, and um, and then here's the other article I had. This is just how Lysenko has been treated by the media, how Lysenko was, or how science was crushed in the face of Lysenkoism. So Lysenko is purposefully starving these people in Ukraine, not allowing anyone to go against or go with his science, you know, or not allowing anyone to go against his idea. Um, The Western scientists like Mendel and Morgan were a hundred percent correct about genetics. uh, But Lysenko wouldn't listen to them because he just loved Stalin and Marxism so much and Marxism is a dogma in the mind of Westerners who don't understand Marxism or dialectical materialism. So, um, which we talked about last time, how, you know, dialectical materialist science can't be dogmatic because dialectical materialism isn't a dogma. Um, but this is how Lysenko has been treated by the media. He's been accused of mass murdering people in Ukraine, right? And the Western press has said that he's a pseudoscientist who wouldn't listen to anybody except himself, even though Lysenko had a good, um, decent grasp, at least on um, all the other ideas uh, that were popular, at least in the Soviet Union during his day. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why he's such a big deal right now on like Marxist Twitter. So yeah, that's kind of the summary of my evolutionary biology learnings there. I, I hope I get to do more videos on that kind of stuff, but um, I feel decent about the amount of knowledge I've garnered so far.